Today in the studio, folks, I've got an extra patriotic treat for you. Michael Seifert is in the house. Michael, what's happening? Great to be here. Folks, if you guys don't know this guy, you can find him on Instagram at Real Michael Seifert. He's also at Official Public SQ for Square. He invented or created Public Square, which is an app that basically is is aggregating all of the, I don't even know what word to use, but uh, businesses that are patriotic. You got it. That believe in, you know, keeping America and I don't want to say great because of Trump, but great again, yeah. you know, which I never thought it was bad, but of recently I do start to think, you know, man, what the hell is going on? Yeah. So, uh, he is the CEO and founder of public square and they're the largest directory of patriotic businesses in the nation. Um, I don't know how you become a business in public square, but if you guys own a business, which a lot of my listeners do, and you want to be listed, you know, go to public, sq.com and check this out because i think this is what's going to if anything's going to save the world yep it's our goal and starting with our country so how did you get into it i was really frustrated (laughs) and i you know obviously i respect business owners and entrepreneurs that start a company because they see a hole in the market and they want to satisfy the market opportunity even if they don't necessarily uh, align with the market opportunity meaning i know some great friends of mine that have are men that have done incredible things in women's fashion and skincare and these things, even if they're not like an ideal consumer of the brand, they just saw a market opportunity and knew they could meet it. It's a whole nother level of satisfactory when you actually are the market that you're creating the product for. I am, I'm a patriotic American that has been so tired of not feeling like there are options because the marketplace has left me behind. The marketplace has pursued woke ideology and globalist ideas. And in the process, the small businesses, the enterprises that have prioritized the principles that have made this country so special in the first place are getting hosed while the Amazons of the world are soaring. And uh, so I've been really excited to find businesses that align with my worldview so that I can put purpose behind my purchases and actually shop in alignment with my values. Watching the issue of the sort of woke corporatism build over the last decade, finally in 2021, had enough, had this idea for what if you could actually gather 100 million patriotic Americans together in a directory where they had opportunities to shop their values and connect with other consumers and business owners alike that shared those same principles. And what if you could kind of put it together where there's a local feel toward it? You could call it the public square. I've always had this affinity with the idea of a public square that you change your country by changing your community. And what if you could shift with the power of your wallets, the power structures of society back toward we, the people. So all this is coming together. And ultimately uh, in January of 2021, it birthed this idea, started putting a product roadmap together. And two years later, we're the largest directory of patriotic businesses the United States has ever seen. We've had millions of consumer hits and tens of thousands of businesses active on the platform. And we're changing the uh, the economy with one patriotic consumer and business owner at a time. Now, what if someone's lying to you? Great question. So when a business signs up, you mentioned earlier, go to publicsq.com. Awesome. That's the best place to start. You'll see there's a button where you can add your business for free. Once the business goes in, they add their business for free. There's a set of seven values that the businesses sign off on. So they basically say, we agree to respect these seven values and we're not going to spend time, money, or resource antagonistically against those values. These are things like we love our country. We love our constitution. We believe that people should be judged by the content of their character which is sort of an antiquated truth now, but the left has really attacked it in the recent years. They want to judge everybody, but your skin color and what you look like and where you're from, we're saying none of that. The only flag you fly around here is the American one. So taking a clear stance on that as well, that we're Americans first and foremost, you cannot uh, discriminate against people based upon medical status. So during the COVID season, it was obviously heartbreaking to watch some businesses discriminate against consumers based upon their medical choices that should be kept private. These are the values to sign off on. Once you sign off on them, then it gets sent, that profile gets sent to one of our business team members. And we've got a team of great, young, scrappy patriots that are around the clock just vetting businesses. Just How do doing, you know, though? Yeah, uh, you can find out a lot. There's some good bullshitters there, out there. There are. But the reality is, if you are a business that's not with us and you're joining into this community, full well understanding, too, that you may get criticized then by your own side if if you're not with us if that makes sense you're sort of putting a target on your back that uh you wouldn't have a desire to do we've maybe only ever seen this once and it was pretty easy to sniff out so we found that the 
the strength and numbers mentality is really strong. We literally have built a, um, an army, not in weapons, but of ideas of these people that have these powerful truths that have been reality since the beginning of time. And they're binding together and moving the money toward these truths. And it's impenetrable from the outside because they're such a strong community. We were worried about the nefarious types that would try to kind of come in and mess with the platform in the early days. And it's still something we're always guarded against. But it was a lot easier to mess with us when we only had 150 businesses on the platform. Now we've got tens of thousands and it's this robust community that's been built and that's validated every time there's a new interaction. And so we've built, thankfully, the infrastructure and the security and the vetting teams and uh, the the uh, name recognition to kind of understand that this is what you're joining. And uh, if you're going to try to mess with us, we've got the resources, thankfully, now to make sure that we're impenetrable to any antagonistic actions. And, and thankfully, it's been amazing to watch how this community has advanced in a really strong way that has has caused our naysayers to be silent. And uh, I'm excited because it's about time the microphone of society gets passed back toward we the people. It's been in this 15% of the population that's angry and loud and uh, uh, virtue signaling every day long. They've had the microphone for too long. It's time it goes back to the average American that just wants to live their life and not be lectured about their politics when they're drinking a cup of coffee. Where do you think these, let's say, woke people get their belief system where, where were we? How come, how come there's the divide? And why does it seem like there's more of them than us? Great question. I would say that for a long time, people like me that believe our country's a great place. Sure, who doesn't? That believe that the United States and the American experiment is the best thing that's ever happened to the world in terms of advancing individual liberties. For people like me, we were apathetic for way too long. And you know, Reagan said freedom's only one generation away from being extinct. Benjamin Franklin said when asked, what type of government have you established here? He said, we've established a republic if you can keep it. And his point was, is that while we have established a republic, we've built this country on these principles that are as old as time itself and will be as evergreen on into eternity. These principles of rights that are endowed by our creator among these is the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These eternal truths. Unfortunately, those things have to be protected every single generation. One generation fighting for it does not mean that they can then pass it off to the next generation and it's going to be automatic. Every single American has to recognize that we, pay a, or we play a part in advancing liberty. The last 40 years, we forgot that. And unfortunately, American consumers, we have largely abdicated our role to the woke people in society, to the globalists that don't have any respect for our country, but instead want to bring the entire world economy really into a global runner's class. These are the people that we've given the microphone to in our own apathy. We stepped out of the cultural environment. We stepped out of the public square. We said, yeah, you know what? We're fine prioritizing convenience over anything else. We're fine prioritizing convenience over national integrity or making sure that our, our national economy is strong first and foremost. And in that, the other side said, okay, there's an opportunity here. And they are not the majority. I'm telling you, it's 15, 20% of the country. Most Americans are with us on this. But unfortunately, this 15, 20%, they treated it like a religion. And they went out and they infected the school systems. They infected school boards. They infected local politics. And they infected the economy. And so now it's our responsibility to wake up, not to become woke, but to wake up and realize what's happened over the past 30, 40 years and take our economy back. Because that, if you do want to see how decisions are made in society, look where the money goes. Could you could you say that they are woke and, and we are awake? You could. It's a great way to word it. Is that a thing? It is. Yeah. In fact, I would like to so be I awake, say, but so not I, woke. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I could say I'm awake. Yep. But not woke. But not woke. Exactly right. Who made up woke? It's a great I, question. I made a meme one time where I had this cool looking picture. I was all badass looking and, and I put woke thinking awake. And I went, you know, I'm woke. And I didn't, I didn't realize that woke was not a good thing. When did it transfer? Because it was good in the beginning, wasn't it? Yep. In about 2014, there were uh, quite a few r racial riots and things in the United States. And um, a lot of this happened around the same time as Ferguson and Obama. The administration was heavily stoking the flame of all of this division, in my personal opinion. And you started seeing that some people would say uh, woke means that you're socially conscious. You care about each other. You care about society. Which I do. I do too. But they didn't mean 
what they said. What they meant was, you have to agree with our worldview or else you're silenced. You have to agree that all white people have privilege and everyone else are disenfranchised or else you're silenced. Uh, and you have to donate to our causes or you're a bigot. These were the ideas that guided the cultural discourse. And so they claimed, yeah, we're the woke ones. We're the socially conscious ones. We have our heads on straight and we know how to love and treat people well. Unfortunately, what we learned is that that whole ideology was built on a nihilistic scam. And you can see that in the organizations that they promoted. Obviously, you saw corporations lining up to support the Black Lives Matter organization. Do I believe every Black Lives Matters? Of course I do. Do I believe that Black Lives Matter organization is a cancer to society that funneled people's money to help their founders buy more mansions in Los Angeles? Yes, because that's, that's what the evidence proven. shows. It's been proven. And so you found that the woke people were not socially conscious at all. They just wanted to advance their Marxist agenda over society, and they wanted to use this false sense of compassion to get there. Well, you know, sometimes because I'm somewhat compassionate. So I think, you know, oh, poor... F People like they just don't realize. They just don't realize. So, like for example, I can get behind Black Lives Mattering. I can get behind that. Of course. And then, and then you know, but when I see, oh, so they took all that money and they were basically using it for personal gain. And and you know, where's the positivity behind the thought? So I always look at the people and be like, well, I understand that, but then I don't understand how once you see the facts. Don't you stop supporting it? It's almost like I don't want to look stupid for supporting it. So I have to keep supporting it no matter what they do. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. And that's their goal. That must be, that must be what's happening because it can't, we can't have that many dipshits in this world. We don't, we don't. It's mostly really awesome people that unfortunately are afraid of looking bigoted. They're afraid of being called the mean names. And so they choose silence. While 15 to 20 percent of the population gets really angry, really loud, steals the cultural airwaves and blasts their message of division. But like you're saying, most Americans say, I kind of go along to get along. I kind of just keep my head down and go through society. But the times we're living in call us to a much higher standard. It's time to speak up. We're losing our country and we cannot allow for the principles that have made this country so great in the first place to be completely eradicated on the altars of woke nonsense. But how can it? The constitution is against it. So who, who can change the constitution? Great question. The constitution should be immovable other than obviously through Isn't amendments. It? it should be absolutely. But we have an administration in the white house currently that believes it's up for interpretation. Yeah, But you they don't get to decide. It. No, the people do. That's right. But the problem is going back 30, 40 years, the other side was smart enough to realize, Hmm, if we can get after the school boards and the judicial system and we can go in and infiltrate these environments, it doesn't matter what their constitution says. We'll just hold the, the halls of power and make sure we can dictate society toward our aims. And then we'll go sit on the corporate boards. We'll be the diversity officer at a big corporate uh, entity. And we'll just shift HR policies toward our aims in these companies. And unfortunately, we've swayed so far from these constitutional truths because we were apathetic. We were quiet. And I'm not, of, of course, saying everyone, but I am saying a majority of our country that should have been speaking out, we unfortunately were silenced. And so now I'm really hopeful for the future because I think there are so many, and I mean literally tens of millions of Americans that are awake, but not woke. They've realized over the past few years with a big illuminating spotlight on culture, exactly what's going on. And they're saying like, hey, look, I've never really been super political. I've never really been involved in the public square. I've never really been well, like one me. to share. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like to go on and get along. I've got my business. I'm crushing it. I kind of want to focus on this. But I can tell you that like what I'm seeing in culture is messed up. Like we, we can't even, we can't even agree on basic truths anymore. Not, not to mention Mike, do you go by Michael or Mike? Uh, I'll respond to both, but Michael, Michael. Yeah, you got it. My brother's name's Michael. Awesome. We call him Mike. So I always think everybody goes by it. Mike, but yeah. I'll go Michael. Um, we got a lot of pussies in this world and even, you know, conservative pussies. So I see a lot of these people where I say, well, you know, and, 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 it's not a bad term I'm given. In other words, not pussy, just like go, what would you say? Go along, go along, to, get along. to get along. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cause waves. Everything's going good for me, but public square is a way where people can do something without being public, which is ironic because yes. it's called public square and it's actually not public. Meaning I can go use my dollars and spend it with, with, 
companies that I want to spend it with and stop spending it with all these other companies that are supporting this bullshit. But nobody's telling your thing doesn't say that I'm spending it here or there. So all of these people that don't want to cause waves, but they do want to do something. This is it. That's why I said, dude, I got to get this guy on the show. Cause all my listeners, I guarantee you, you know, they're the, they're the ones that'll show up with pitchforks in the town square. I'm serious. Like, you know, I, I believe, yeah. but, but I know I got some, some wokies too. Yeah. You know, a lot of people listen to the show, but I think because they think, I am just real. Like, in other words, I'm, I'm all for, you could sit here and think, you know, for one second, I might be left and one second I might be right. Just depends on what you're talking about. But there's so many people on the right conservative that don't know what to do. Well, folks, this is something you can do. Quit spending your money with companies. I don't know how to say it right because I'm not political that support the shit we don't like or that is going on that is not good. It's not good. Like, for example, restaurants that forced you to wear a mask. Now, if I'm a restaurant uh, owner and the, the the city's coming in and screwing with me to where I got to make you wear a mask, bro, I'm sorry. I got to wake make you wear a mask, you know, so I don't get my license remote. I understand. Then make people wear a mask. I totally get it. Um, but just be willing to not have people show up at your building. Because again, I won't go to a restaurant if I had to wear a mask. I just won't go. I won't go to your mall. I won't go to your dealership. Like you, you make me wear a mask, bro. I'm not coming around you. I was a no masker the whole time. Mm -hmm. Now, the only time an exception was flights, but cause I, I had to fly. I needed to fly. I'll wear your stupid mask, but I called, fake mask.com or whatever it was. You ever see those? One of those mesh ones. Yeah, dude, yeah. you could totally breathe. Yeah, it was freaking wonderful. Yeah. But the point being is like, I, you know, bow down to some of the things cause you have to. And that's why I don't like it because of these powers that be realize they're, they're getting you right where you like social media, yep. you know, you can make a lot of money on social media. You can get a lot of reach on social media, but if you say anything, you're done. The other day I was talking to my friend on TikTok. He was doing a TikTok and a, and an Instagram live. So I'm watching him and he says, pops me in there. So he pops me in there. And I said something to him where I used the word gay twice and it kicked me off. And it said, you've been kicked off basically for a hateful speech. And I said, what? I said, gay. And, and then I, and then I called him back on his phone cause he was still on the lives and I called him back on his phone. I said, dude, I just got kicked off. I said, Hey, hateful speech. He goes, you kidding me? And I said, no. He goes, well, what did you say? I said, I didn't say anything. I said, gay. And then, and then, uh, his buddy, Eli and Mike, they're gay. And so they were on the live and I said, you guys are gay. What, what do you guys call yourselves? Like, is that a bad thing to call people gay? Like, aren't you, aren't you gay? They said, yeah, we're gay. Like, and, and it was just the funniest thing. Cause there was no harm or no hate at all. And dude, they booted my boy. Cause I, I cause he, they heard it from his phone now on the lives, gay, gay, gay. They, they killed the live feed and they suspended him for a week and said, uh, hate speech. And we weren't saying anything hateful. In fact, gay people were talking about being gay and it's like, come on, dude, that goes too far. It's yep. like, what the hell is going on in this world? Yep. So public square is all about put your dollars where your values are. Yep. So that's why I said in the beginning, how do you know? Yep. Because like, I, if I go to public square, my first thing is, how do I know some dickweed is smart enough to know, hey, if I want the right wing dollars, I just get on this app. Yep. So how, like, how, how do you vet, like yeah. vet, vet one of my companies. I want to go put one of my companies on there to see, I mean, well, no, cause that wouldn't prove. I got to get one of my lefties to put a company on there to see if you can sniff them out. Like in other words, how do you know? I think you'd be pretty amazed at how, how good our team is. What at, are some uh, of the things that they do? Well, the internet's a helpful place because you can learn a lot about uh, a business's persona and the values that they value with some quick searches. And so 
Oh, you just look and see what they're Absolutely. saying. Yeah, you go to their website, you look at what they're saying, you look at the messaging that they espouse, you can look um, at some different places to see if if it's a public-facing business, what other consumers have said about them. You can often look to the About Us page at businesses that'll show you what their values are, so especially at larger corporate entities, if they start talking about DEI policies or diversity, equity, inclusion, that generally means that this business has kowtowed to the left and is embracing this sort of idea that we all need to judge each other based on each each other's skin color and see marginalized groups and all this stuff. Uh, ESG policies, this is a huge one. So if they have sustainability promises and they're really pushing hard for environmental, social, or governance policies as it relates to inclusion and equity and these different things, these are all buzzwords that are telltale signs that something is problematic related to this business. And our goal is to also spend less time telling you where you should stay away from and instead spending more time telling you where you should go. So our, our whole goal, we get asked all the time, do you guys have a blacklist? Do you, you know, do you have a list of businesses I shouldn't go to? We don't. And that's because culture does enough of that already. Like you can learn pretty quickly which businesses you shouldn't go to. Chase and Bank of America and PayPal, they're canceling conservatives every day. So really? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Our bank see, friend to cancel us. See, it's, but that's the thing. Like the now, if thing. everybody listening and everybody I wish everyone listened to this, you know, cause we'd have, you know, 300 and some million people listening and a bunch of them might hate you and hate what we're saying, but let's say a couple hundred million, if we are still the yep. majority, a couple hundred million that are patriotic, they do love our country. They say, well, screw bank of America, screw chase. What bank isn't Yeah. like, where do I go? Well, that's what public squares for. Exactly. I right. assume. Yep. Exactly so do you right. have banks? Oh yeah. Are they small community banks? We have some major corporate ones as well. In fact, we do all of our banking at Public Square and we're a major corporate entity. We do it with a bank that shares our values. And so we get to know every well, single day you, that we're can protecting. Can you name the bank? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly shout Axos Bank out. Because I'll, I'll, I'll switch banks. They're I'll fantastic. Switch banks. You'd I'm, love I'm, them. I'm not down for yep. you know that kind of bullshit. There's you some know. amazing banks, Axos Bank, Farmers and Merchants. There's some awesome financial institutions out there. And I use there. Chase and I use yep. B of A. Yeah. They're, they're, they're two of the worst. And it's so hard. You pointed out something, Brad, earlier that's, that's really important for listeners to understand, which is that just because you can't do it all doesn't mean don't do something. Meaning a lot of people are like, well, I have an Apple watch and an iPhone and I bank with Chase. And so what's the point? Like ultimately, I'm never going to be able to change anything. So I'll just keep going with how I'm doing things today. Our encouragement to everyone is don't be ashamed if you can't reroute all your purchases overnight. That's impossible. The cars we drive, unfortunately, every single major car company is donating to a progressive social cause or they're pushing an ESG agenda. Yeah, but, do, but don't you think they're doing that just to not cause waves and get them dollars? They are. Because again, like if somebody that I know is woke. Yep. I got woke people working here. Yep. I got, I, I, I'll do business with woke people. Of like course. I'm not prejudiced or racist or yep. anything. Like yep. I don't, I don't harm you because you have your beliefs. Yep. I just say, Hey, look, no problem. And that's what businesses need to see. And so my point is, but maybe that's, maybe that's why they're doing it because they're just trying to get, you know, they're just trying to be open like me. I'm open. Yep. And unfortunately in their openness, they become discriminatory because these policies, DEI, ESG, these things inherently say that we're prioritizing some skin colors above others. For example, Yelp, which is kind of our closest competitor, Yelp will give free advertising to certain skin colors different months of the year. They'll give free advertising to gay owned businesses openly in the month of and June. publicly, openly and publicly. I mean, that, that that's, that's what they'll tell you. Yep. If you're black yep. or you're Mexican yep. or yep. whatever you are other than white, we'll give you yep. Extra. February, black owned businesses get special highlights. They get special favors, privileges. June, gay owned businesses get special fit privileges, special favors. Never happens to the white owned businesses. And this is the problem inherently with ever seeing skin color in general is that in our openness or inclusivity, we become discriminatory. We begin to rank and file certain colors and genders and ethnicities when in reality, we're all people. We're all human beings. And in the United States, we're all Americans. And that should be the only thing that we care about. And actually, we're filming this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It was him that said correctly that I dream of a nation where we're not judging each other based upon the content, or excuse me, the color of our skin, but instead on the content of our character. Our nation That's has that. lost that. And so for us, what we want to inspire to people is that, hey, there are a lot of big businesses that have unfortunately bowed to an ideology that is inherently discriminatory and hateful and divides our country. But if 
you'll move your dollars toward a coffee shop or a new clothing company or new shoes or a new plumber that happens to share your values, that loves this country, that won't lecture you about politics. If you move your money in that direction, oh, and by the way, a lot of these businesses will give you discounts for doing so. If you'll take those simple steps, you'll be amazed. One day the car company is going to see, wait, 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 the market's moving over here. Wait, wait, wait. People aren't putting up with this anymore. Wait, wait, wait. The American people are stepping up and they actually... They prefer this like antiquated beauty of the United States that doesn't care what you look like. We should go and prioritize that. If you go and watch the Coca-Cola commercials from 20 years ago, it was true classic Americana. It was beautiful. We're all in this together. We love our country. We're all Americans. We share our value for freedom and liberty. And that's what binds us today. It's all about how many genders there are and how many skin colors there are and all these different things. So our goal is let's bring it back to what it was when America was a special place. Let's bring it back to companies just saying we love our country and we want to serve you quality products. That's our goal. And if consumers in the process, if we can help them feel like superheroes with a simple cup of coffee purchase, all of a sudden, you'll start to notice that the purchases of your life are shifting more toward your values. You do one thing, you do another thing, then all of a sudden you find a new insurance provider, then you find a new bank. Last story I'll tell you, there was an awesome insurance company that was on the platform that did a promo to our consumers. This was back in November. And that one promo to our consumers tripled their business overnight because consumers have said, I'm so tired of insurance companies moving my money that I give them toward causes I don't believe in. And here I've got America First Healthcare that's coming in and saying that they just love our country and want to serve me a great product and they're not going to donate to causes that hate our country. Like, I'm in. I want my money to go there. Their business tripled overnight. They had to hire 12 more employees. Well, I'm, I'm on Phenomenal. record. I'm on record for that as well. Let's go. All my businesses refuse to donate to stupidity. Let's go. That's great. Well, Let's then you're you're an awesome Public Square community member. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, what'd you do before this? I was in marketing. <laughs> I, uh, I built websites and marketing campaigns and things for a, a private equity group and had a lot of great interaction with small businesses. How did you learn marketing? Uh, I learned growth from people that were incredible mentors in my life that scaled ideas from ground up and grew very inspired by the idea that you could take an idea and be hungry enough to see it succeed that with your time, your effort, your resource, you pour gas on the fire, you go all in, you refuse to let doubt pull you away from the eye on the prize mentality, and you can end up creating something that benefits society as a whole. I, I knew a guy, a mentor of mine, who went from virtually nothing, no income growing up, poor community, uh, graduated high school, got on the real estate grind, and ended up 20 years later, buying an entire city, transforming it in North wow. County, San Diego. I look at guys like that and I'm like, okay, that's, that's a culture changer. And so, uh, people like that inspired me to learn marketing because marketing can do a lot. If you can learn how to grow something, uh, you can differentiate your product or your offering in a pretty phenomenal way. Yeah, I get a bunch of college kids that listen to the show or follow me and they ask, you know, what would I do if I were them? Mm -hmm. I say, learn marketing every time because yep. man, I'm telling you, that's the, that's the skill set. I believe people are where they are from because of their mindset, their skill set, or their habits. Those are what really kind of dictate everything. You climbed Mount Everest with no oxygen, it says. No. So where does it say I that? I swear to God it does. D <laughs> no did you? No way. No. I don't know where they got that, but that is not what I did. You know what's funny is because like I, I got a little team. Little, I wish. Little, That'd be awesome. That'll look stuff up. No. And, 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 and sometimes it's wrong, but it says here, I was going to be like, what? It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem like a mountain Maybe climber. another Michael Seifert, but not this one. It says the marketplace is free to join for consumers and it business is. owners alike. Michael has just, ha Michael has pulled gutsy stunts before like climbing Mount Everest <laughs> multiple times nope, without no oxygen. Wish. Nope. Not me. I spend all my time working and with my family. No Everest time for me. Maybe there's a PR person that whipped out an article cause they got this from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, That's funny. Somebody must've uh, whipped up an article that had another Michael Seifert doing really badass things that spends his time climbing mountains, but we're trying to conquer different mountains and they look like economic strongholds. So do you, do you, uh, do you see public square growing like exponentially? I do. And in one year you've already got tens of thousands of businesses. Mm -hmm. It's only 2023 just turned. Yeah. So where do you see it in 2025? 
We just launched nationwide six months ago, and I've been blown away by how large this market truly is. To your question earlier of, are we in the minority? Are we alone? No. If you love your country and you love your freedoms and you believe simple truths, you're not alone. And the last six months have proven that for us. 2025, uh, we're the one-stop shop for this idea of a parallel economy, a freedom economy. Uh, 100 million Americans plus that are gathering together and have the opportunity to move the dollars toward companies that will embrace these truths that have made America so special. That's our potential. Uh, so I'll tell you confidently in 2025, you you won't need Amazon anymore for the majority of your purchases. Um, and Amazon is sort of the big boogeyman. Amazon has like 80 different companies. So I'm specifically talking about the Amazon that's a shopping experience. Uh, the reality is those companies have become apathetic. They've stopped developing. They, they've basically stagnated because they're focusing more on all of their own internal conflicts and the politicization of it all. So we're going to rise with a grassroots movement of incredible shoppers and business owners alike and create a marketplace that is driven uh, by commerce for the purpose of belonging, that you'd know that uh, there's a social experience. You're not alone when you shop. That driver is more powerful than anything. The desire to feel like you're not alone in your values, that there's a trust that's immediately installed in every interaction. Uh, that'll be the case for every single purchase you want to make in 2025. And so that's where we're going. We're an interactive shopping experience for both local and online communities so that you can move money toward companies that don't hate you. Dude, what, if, what if you end up like an Amazon? If we end up like an Amazon, I'll tell you this. Size wise, but yeah. not not view, yep. views wise. Yeah, I, I would take it. I would take it, especially on the on the social side, or excuse me, on the commerce side. Amazon, unfortunately, has will be your merchant processor. There you go. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I, honestly, you're you're in a brilliant industry because financial services is where the trust has been burned the most. There are business owners and consumers are like that are looking for financial solutions uh, because. For whatever reason, the major financial players of today have said that we're going to start factoring in the values in the marketplace and canceling you if you don't you don't believe what we tell you to believe. It's not freedom. Yeah, or uh, or social scores. Yep, social credit scores are a real thing. They're very real. It's people, people are not aware, I don't think yet, of what that means. But theoretically, you could you know be charged more for gas because you hung out with the wrong people, yep. or you didn't go to the right place or you're not supporting the right things. So literally your social score drops and now your gas is more money than everybody else's, your power, your lights, if, if you're even allowed to drive. They yeah. could literally say, you know what? No gas for you, Michael. Yeah. You're being an asshole. Or turn off your electric car. Yeah, instantly. Yeah. None for you. You Software. can't drive this week. Yep. You better stop hanging out with that Brad Lee character. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. They like may tell you to stop hanging out with me. Who knows? It, well, we might that, both get canceled. That would probably be more like it because yeah. you're, you're more public <laughs> than I am. Yeah. Like, again, I mean, I, I believe in the same things as, as you do, obviously. Um, I don't know all your beliefs, but again, when people say, well, are, am I a right wing conservative? No, not necessarily. Like, again, dude, I, I you got to ask me question by question to see what I believe. Because, again, sometimes I've said, well, I believe this. And someone's like, well, see, that's more left. Well, then I might be more left on that. I yep. don't know. Like welfare, you know, listen, I, I, I believe in taking care of people that can't help themselves, you know, give, give them people some money. I don't believe in giving people money and then they trade them for drugs and, and abuse this, the welfare system. So in other words, I, I, but I do believe in welfare. I do believe in taking care of our sick, poor, and hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't believe in like the money in to Ukraine. Like, again, I, I understand. Give them some money. Okay. But then what about the people here? Yeah. What about downtown Los Angeles? And why? Because that's because yeah. we're Americans. Like, let's worry about America first yeah. and let's get America thriving again. Let's let's not worry about their business over there. Ukraine and Russia and it used to be Russians and, you know, they don't want the port. And like, look, you guys figure it out. What, what do we got to do with it? We're way over here. Let's yeah. focus on ourselves. That's what I'm about. Yeah. Let's focus on ourselves. But I don't mind them giving the Ukrainians some some help. Like if I was getting my ass kicked by a bunch of big motherfuckers, I'd 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 appreciate some people to come pitch in and help me. At least throw me a bat. Right? Give me a bat. Make it equal. Something. Give me a gun. I'll be happy. You thank you. I'd be I'd appreciative. And I wouldn't be pissed for that country to help that country. But enough's enough. Yep. We're, we're you know, we've got hungry kids in this country. We've got homeless, like it's going out of style. Have you been to Portland oh. or LA? Yeah. It's a dude, war zone. 
Dude, last time I went to San Francisco, I'm not even joking, and that was a beautiful city. It smelled like pee, the whole city. Yep. It smelled like piss. Like, what the hell happened here? Yep. And they're allowing it. And I don't understand who's in charge. Who is in charge? Then they're giving people in your state. You should be moving out of California. I can't believe you live there. I know. I hear it every day. Yeah. Don't be a hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> you better go, go move to Texas. I'm fighting for it. Dude, you need to be From in the Texas. inside. I know. And by the way, Everybody dude, like me. I see on the internet, houses in Texas are like ridiculously cheap. Yeah. I saw one the other day. They're like, look what you get for 315000 And it just looks like a mansion. And I'm like, shut the hell up. I, I, I left a comment. I'll take one. And dude, they they hit me with a list and they there are badass houses out there for like three hundred and fifty grand. Now, I don't want to live there. I'm just going to buy them for rentals. But, dude, yeah. Texas is all right. Uh, I know. And it's only getting more and more people every year, largely because most Americans recognize what you just described, which is that the major coastal cities in the United States that have been unfortunately overrun by an ideology that promotes petty politics over actual humanity. Uh, they would rather virtue signal and prioritize plastic or paper straws and focus on that instead of the fact that there are heroin needles on the street. Yep. Those people, unfortunately, have allowed our cities to crumble. And then you're seeing mass migrations to Texas, to Florida, to Arizona, to Utah. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the holdouts in California. We're fighting from the inside. And there are a lot of, a lot of patriots in the state with me. But it's, it's definitely a challenge to watch how people, it seems like, are engaging in how intentional did, destruction. How did Gavin Newsom win again then? Uh, yeah, that's a long conversation. But is it, is it it's fraud? A, it's, it's a mix of, I, 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 will, I will say this. I will say that for a long time, California has built up backstops in place to ensure that the regime in power stays in power. And that looks like a lot of different things. It looks like picking up homeless people off of the street and enticing them with clothes to go vote for their preferred candidate. They're picking up people that think that the aliens are talking to them and yet saying, hey, why don't you just mark right here on this ballot to vote? And in California, ballot harvesting is legal. So if you have enough of an operation around it, you can go and pick up any random Joe, bring him to the ballot. So I'll, I'll, I'll drop your ballot off for you. Just engage with me here. And there's no verification of things. California's election system is so broken. And so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tall task to change California. But I will tell you this, if you look even to the midterms, Arguably, if you're a if you're a patriotic American, no state fared better than California. We flipped a lot of seats. We had a lot of politicians that love our freedoms rise up to the to the to the plate and really um, hit home runs. And uh, by the way, Brad, the the thoughts that you have towards some of these social and economic issues. It's what the majority of Americans feel. We want to help people. We want to serve the least of these. We want to make sure that people are taken care of. And sure, the the right and the left uh, have some different ways of getting there. But there's a big difference between the right and the left and the moderates and then hyper leftists, that 15% of the population that just want to watch the world burn. Most Americans are like, we do want to help people. Now let's figure out how we do that together. You're going to think it looks a little bit more like welfare. I'm going to look, think it looks a little bit more like verification and, and dropping regulation on businesses so they can hire more people. Like We may have different ways of getting there, but Americans want to help people. We, we want to help the countries of the world that are facing oppression. Of course we do. But like the famous airline analogy, what do they tell you, the flight attendants, when you get on the airplane related to the oxygen mask when they come down? You put on yours first, and then you put on the person next to you. Because ultimately, you're no good to the world if you can't take care of your own people first. These are simple truths. Most Americans agree with these things. And we're not the ones trying to overly politicize everything in this society. What's, but, what's, what's funny is if you think about it in the past, if you said, you know, black people, that was like almost racist. But if you say now, when I hear people say, anytime someone says white people, as soon as someone says something that are white people, I always think, uh oh, they're racist. Yeah. It's almost like they condition us to make it a bad thing. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought about, because again, I'm far from as racist as you can get, but have you ever thought about like, you know, black entertainment television? People are like, well, what if they had white entertainment television? You know, people would freak out. Well, I understand because, you know, they, they had to go through some shit, black people. Yep. You know, there was serious racism and oppression. And I mean, dude, I don't, I don't, I feel bad for them. Now, at the end of the day, though, like, do I believe there's still racism? Yes, I do. Do, 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 I, do I think you should be racist? No, I do not. But I, and I know you're not saying that either. No. But to be American, right? 
American, dude, you can be Chinese, yep. you can be black, you can yep. be white. You That's can what be makes not. us beautiful. Yep. Exactly. And it's, and it's all of us. The question is, is do you love the country? Mm-hmm. Like people that kneel. I almost quit going to football because of that. Like, dude, why are you kneeling? Well, it's country. It, it has nothing to do with the country. The fact that this country is so great allows you to kneel. So again, kneel if you want to, but why? Like, it's a country. It's not a human being. It's not a particular party. It's a country. It's a land. And that's what I like, the land. Yep. The, 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 the history of, of breaking apart from Britain and, 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 and becoming our own. Yep. I just like that. Yeah. It's entrepreneurial, if you ask me. It is. It's in our blood. It's the spirit of the United States is one to recognize that what binds us together is is not even geography. It's not the color of our skin. It's these deeper principles that have created uh, the least racist country in the world. I mean, there's a reason that the United States is at the top of the chart for countries that people are wanting to immigrate to. It's because in people's heart of hearts, they don't think the United States is racist. We're not. We're not. Why Why would any other ethnicities want to come here then? And they do. The United States is seen as a beacon of hope and freedom for all people. That's the truth. Well, they, so, look, they look at these, you know, KKK extreme racist people talking about white pride and you know, and by the way, like they're, they're, they're German. Like if you're racist, you don't like Germans either. Do you? And besides that, what's a, I, I get confused when I get into these things. Cause like, aren't we all the same race? Yep. I believe we we're are We're different ethnicities, but we're all the same human race. We're and human then, race. Yep. We are a human being. We have different colors of same. melanin in our skin, but at the end of the day, we all bleed the same color. And that's a and truth. If I go to Mexico for a month, dude, I get dark, extremely dark. It's the same dude. Yep. Darker skin, who cares? Like, again, I, and, but there are people that do care. You realize that. Yeah. They, they're, it's a tiny population. Yeah. They're, they're, I would say a minority. They're there and they're, but they're small. But I would say the same thing. I mean, like, put your money where your mouth is. Mm-hmm. If, if you believe that this nonsense is going too far, then I would just say, listen, I'm going to spend my money with, with businesses that align with my values. And if you're correct, Soon, Public Square will be huge because the because there's a lot of people that believe that. I know I'm not the only one that believes that. You're not. I hope I hope you don't get canceled or screwed with because, from what I'm seeing, the let's call them the left or the woke or whoever they are, they're pretty fucking powerful, Michael. Mm-hmm. Very powerful, as a, as a matter of fact. Like they can control elections, from what I hear. Mm-hmm. Like in Arizona, Kerry Lake versus the Hobbs lady. Yep. Dude, impossible. But yet happens. Yep. Did you do you know about that? Yeah. The it's fact ridiculous. that Katie Hobbs is able to certify her own election. That's is, but that's my point. Like who wildest. decided that was okay? Yep. Like where is everybody's head? <laughs> like, dude, listen, this is this is getting too far. It's obvious in some cases. Like you have to recuse yourself. It's not an it's not an option, yep. Katie. It ain't an option. You're in the race. Well, then you don't get to manage the race. Yeah. So take a pick. Yep. Who Who's in charge? Like, who didn't say that? Yep. And again, are they all part of this agenda? Because to me, dude, listen, I love to go conspiracy. Problem is, is I'm too, in my mind, common sense for it. Like, for example, they say, you know, you've heard of Andrew Tate, of course. Yep. So, you know, well, they're trying to, you know, silence him and, you know, listen, Guys, there's people out there that for very little money will kill you. Like there's there's assassins in the in the world. There's really hit people in the world. There's people that will kill you for for not even very much money. If somebody really wanted Andrew silent, they'd just send somebody over and kill his ass. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like, why do I have to, like, if I'm a big, powerful, evil cabal that wants to freaking, you know, torture children and traffic children, why would I need to find a way to trump up bullshit to put him in jail? Why would I have to hope the whole world doesn't like him? So make up stories so he's not liked. Now, it sounds like, damn, dude, that's what they're doing. But at the end of the day, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like that makes any sense. Why? Well, and I, if I had a problem with you, bro, I'd just have someone come over and eliminate you. Yeah. Why, why would I'm I need to Trump side. you up yeah. in jail? Yeah. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I do. And I think, I think there's obviously a fine line because I think it can get, it can get easy for us to get cynical, right? It can get easy for us to, in our frustration at what's happening in the society around us, look for two or three people at the top that are responsible and pit it all on them. The reality is that is happening a lot of times. There truly are elite forces that are wanting to silence certain members of the population. And at times they choose to, uh, they choose to take violent means. Other times they choose to take psychological means. Other times they choose to shift the narrative. All that's real and happens. Uh, and heard enough stories from the inside of people that can confirm that. But at the end of the day, most people are not evil. Most people are stupid. So most people are not nefarious or desiring to be malicious in intent. A few people are, but most people are just, we're not paying attention. And I think oftentimes we can paint everyone that uh, believes a certain way as evil. And in reality, it's like, no, that and even in California, most of the people that are lining up to just vote blue no matter who and just continue to put up the regime that's in power today, they're not, they don't think they're hating me when they do that. That's not their intent going to the ballot box. I believe that maybe I'm being idealistic, but I actually believe their intent is more just to go along to get along. This is what you do here. I just want to be the nice person. I want to be compassionate. And the TV told me that this is what compassion looks like. Most people are like that. We're sort of sheep at times and we just go where we want to go. And, uh, this happened in the Roman empire too. I mean, this is true as history is long uh, like Rome obviously fell, while people were largely entertained with bread and circuses and they didn't really care. And most people were just apathetic toward it all. The United States revolution, you talk earlier about America breaking apart from Britain in this epic, glorious battle for our own liberation and freedom. The reality is most of society in, in the colonies were apathetic to the whole cause. It was a very small percentage of the American population that said we are willing to go to war to break free. And not only that, 30% of the population were loyal to the crown so you had 30% of the population that was loyal to the crown. Another 30, 40% of the population that was like, eh, who cares? Like, we're, we're still living. We're fine. It's all happy. And then you had a small group of the population that said, we care enough to do something. And thank God they did, because I'm sitting here today because of it in the most free country the world's ever known. And so there's two lessons in there. Which One isn't is, free at all. No, I know. It, it's, it's an aspirational quote, really, because, again, it goes back to what type of government do you have here? Well, we have a republic if you can keep it. Our freedom is at risk of being exterminated every single day. We're the closest the world knows to that ideal, but it's not, it's not, it's not free. It doesn't come easily. It takes sacrifice. It takes companies like mine should not have to exist. Every single company in the United States should say, of course, I love my country. Of course, I want to believe the principles of the Constitution, and I'm not going to infringe upon those in interactions with consumers and employees. Of course, I'm not going to force one of my employees to be vaccinated in order to work here. Most companies should adopt See, that. See, again, I, I advertise that. Like, in other words, I think companies should be proud of their of their stances and, and welcome the people that that attracts. So like restaurants, if they put up a sign that said no mass required, dude, I'm going to eat there Amen. because of the, how they are, because yep. they're not making you wear a mask. It was stupid in the first place. Yep. Now, again, you walk in, someone right there doesn't have to have a mask. You do because you're standing here or you're walking past like, come on, guys, use your damn brain. Either everyone wears a mask, which you can't in a restaurant because how are you supposed to eat or you don't need a damn mask or guess what? Hey, we're a free country. You don't want, you're afraid of the, of the virus. Stay home. You're afraid. Stay home. You don't need a mask at home. And then they were talking about putting masks at home. Then they're talking about forced vaccinations. I told people we don't wear masks here. I had a, I had an employee here, uh, calling, uh, the employee board or somebody came and said, you know, heard you don't wear masks here. And I said, no, we don't wear masks here. Thankfully I, I sent most of my, uh, employees home so there's a rule that you don't have to wear a mask if you have a certain amount of space and i had like you know 10 employees at the time working in the space and there's plenty of room here there's all this whole floor is mine so thirty thousand square feet at 10 employees they they left and didn't say anything but someone turned me in because i said you don't have to wear a mask i, I didn't mind if you did i just said you don't have to and you don't and you definitely don't have to get vaxxed can you imagine all the companies out there if they'd have just stood up and said, "Hey, screw the mandates. I'm a I'm a company that believes this." How much uh, business they would have gotten? An astronomical amount. It's honestly the thesis that we've proven with Public Square 
And you've he, heard you've heard of Ian Smith, I'm sure. Oh yeah, good friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, like, dude, he's the real deal, dude. That dude, I'm telling you, you want to talk about freaking brave? Yeah. He 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 withstood some shit. Yeah. Good for him too. He's the type I'm, of business it, that makes America. Square? Square? Oh yeah. And but look how everyone supported him. Yep. Then there was a cop that said something, and and they fired his ass because he said it, and everybody like go funded you know uh, like millions of dollars for him. Yep. So I know there's good folks out there, dude. There are. And they and they do care, but they're they're probably a lot like me where we don't necessarily know what to do. So this is something you can do. Yep. It's use, very simple. Use your dollars to talk. That's easy. Because I promise you, man, Disneyland has nobody there. You know, Disney bankrupt. Why? Because we're not we're not dealing with Disney anymore. Okay. Apple, same thing. Fuck Apple. Okay. Screw all these companies. Well, you don't you don't get an iPhone. I know that's tough. That's tough. But guess what? They do have a uh, uh, another phone. And by the way, that's the last thing I want to end with. Because when I start thinking like this, I get all a little bit you know pissy, and I think to myself, "Well, screw all these big companies," and I don't care. But I do care. Just like I told my wife once, you know, we're not getting vaxxed. Period. They well, what if they go door to door? Then then we're gonna be dead. That's what. Because I ain't getting a vax, and neither are my kids. We'll move to the mountains if we have to. She said, "You know, I uh, that's cool." And I said, "Babe, you can go without shopping." Because what if they said, "Dude, if you get a vax, or you don't shop." In Los Angeles, they did. In New York, they did. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. It's authoritarian. Well, it's you know what I did? I, I hired, or I didn't hire, they worked for me because I got some freaking Wokies w- walking around this building, Um, which proves again, I'm as fair as they get. Like, I don't care what your political views are. I don't care if you're a he or a him or a she or a shim or a, you know, trans. I don't care what you are. As long as you can do the work, let's go. But my girl, uh, Maria, she went and got a vax, no problem, all of them. And so I just sent her to get me everything. <laughs> I just sent my assistant that was that was woke. And by the way, everybody I talked to that did vote for Biden said they didn't vote for Biden. They just voted against, against Trump. Trump. Yep. Now, again, when people say, well, you got anything against Trump? Listen, it, if it were up to me, you know, I, I, I think Trump's a businessman. So, you know, I'd, I'd want a businessman running the country. I think he I think he had the economy going the right direction. But now they're like, who do you want? Well, I'd probably say DeSantis only because Trump's going to cause so much problems because it's, it's almost like if it's him, they won't let it go. Maybe if it's DeSantis, they will. Maybe if it's DeSantis, they'll go away. But I doubt it. I don't think it's going to get better unless unless everybody listening to this podcast shares the podcast with everybody they know and everybody stops saying, well, what can I do? Because we've just finally get I've asked a bunch of people that come in here. What can we do, though? What can we do? And we never get a good answer. This is a legitimate way to do it. Get on public square. If you're a business and you believe in it, get on public square. But if you're a consumer and you believe in it, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. The consumers, there's millions more consumers than there are businesses. So if just the consumers that are listening to this, share it with all their friends and family, the, 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 the ones that don't like it, what we're saying, no problem. Keep shopping where, wherever you want to shop. But the ones that are thinking, man, they got good points, dude, go to public sq.com, right? You got it. Public square and freaking use your money with businesses that feel the same way you do. What's next for Michael Seifert? We have a massive 2023. And Dude, banks, you sound like you're going to be a politician. No, no, God, no, please not. No, no, never. I like this world. In fact, I, uh, I think you just talked about the presidential primary. I, I think that the country changes a lot more when individual patriots step up and vote with their wallets than it does with any politician in office. I think the reality is that the people have the power to change society. And so that's what I want to focus on. I want to, I want to help people feel like they can be superheroes with simple purchases again, that they can change the country back to something they're proud of. So no politics for me, just business. I love it. Good. I like that folks. You guys heard it here on dropping bombs. Now listen, do your part, go to public SQ, just like square first two letters. 
get signed up, sign up your business and do what you can to stop this nonsense. Because if you don't, I'm telling you folks, we're heading in a direction you don't want to be. And that's the crazy part. Everyone will be like, nying, 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 until all of a sudden they're like, well, wait, this ain't right. But then it's too late. Yeah. We're all screwed. Like, trust me when I tell you, we want to remain a free country. We want to remain like less government. Government needs to mind government's business, right? And then let the states and the counties worry about themselves. I, I strongly believe in that. Yep. Have you ever read the Constitution? Many times. I started reading the Constitution. I'm like, dude, it's actually a pretty intelligent document. Yep, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, it's like, dude, and, and, and the right to bear arms is for this purpose. So I don't think we're ever going to have to give up our guns, but that's what the Canadians believed. Yeah, and the Australians. And the Australians. And then look what was happening there during COVID. Yeah. Especially Australia, dude. I used to want to go visit there. I'm never going there. Like, that was just crazy to me. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hope this episode gets shared a bunch and not suppressed. Amen to that. I it, agree. Because <laughs> aren't, aren't all the tech companies somewhat woke? Yeah. You gave a great example with Instagram earlier. They do this often. And well, so, they did it to me when I was talking about this, talking about that. I got like, you know, 900 views. And then sometimes I'll get like 90,000 views. And I'm like, what's the difference? My team started looking into it. And it's because, dude, they were suppressing shit for years. Like, this isn't new. Yep. And now that the the facts are coming out, where the FBI, the government, dude, that is called corruption. Yep. That's called scary. Because the government, dude, we're supposed to be able to trust the government. They answer to us, or they should. Well, they, they're supposed to, according supposed to the to. document. Yep. He, I'm going to end with this, because I know you got to go. We the people, we always hear that. That's how the Constitution begins. My theory as to why we're screwed, ultimately, is because the government and government bodies can go into a room, call a meeting, vote, document, witness that the vote was carried by our representatives, mind you. So our representatives voted a particular way, and it's all on record. So they can say, look, this is the law, bitches. We, the people have no ability to meet and, and vote and document that vote. So it's almost like, imagine if I could press a button. I was going to write a movie one time about this, so you might do it because you started that app. You might start this app. <laughs> I'm going to climb Everest next, apparently. But imagine if I pressed a button and I could get you know everybody's vote, and it was legit. So I could say, like, you know, hey, is, should weed be legal? And then I go, should weed be legal? And the world, the United States, not the world, goes blink. And all of a sudden it shows you, you know, 79% said, sure. Okay, then that's what it is. Hey, uh, Biden won. Click. Did Biden win? Hey, weird. 87% of the people said no. But we have no way to communicate. We have no way to authenticate our beliefs. And that's why we, the people, no longer exists. But... And I'm going to end with this. Let's go. Dude, you tapped into the one way that, that we can make a difference. The money. Because of all these people that support it, and they're half in, half out. Like, they're not left, and they're not right. They're just, they just want to get along. Well, so they're, so they're wishy-washy. And that's, and that's all we have to help. Because the wishy-washy, plus the people that are, you know, firmly in that stance, is enough to make the the sway but if if these companies started feeling it financially yep. that hey they're not listening to this bullshit anymore they're not allowing this nonsense anymore we can't do that or we will go out of business i guarantee you things will change and that's and that's what you've done that's our goal so good job buddy thank you Brad. i appreciate you i'm sure at least 99 percent of the bomb squad appreciates <laughs> awesome. you thank you and uh, anytime you want to come back let me know appreciate it and folks as always until next time, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.